the Google Pixel 10. When you first look at this phone, your reaction might be, that's it? This feels like the most iterative, boring pixel launch Google has ever done. The design is basically identical to last year and specs look like downgrades on paper. And yet, the more you dig into this device, the more you realize Google might be playing a completely different game from everyone else. So let's break down what's really happening here. Visually, this thing is nearly indistinguishable from the Pixel 9. Same dimensions, same camera, same overall aesthetic. The only difference, the new matte glass bag on the Pro model, which looks and feels premium. And this magnetic Pixel snap charging system that's basically Google's answer to Max plays where things get controversial. While everyone else is fighting this spec wire cameras, brighter displays, faster charging, Google made some questionable choices. For the first time ever, the Google Pixel 10 gets a triple camera system with a 5x telephoto lens. That sounds amazing, right? But here's the catch. They downgraded the main camera sensor from 50 megapixels to 48. The ultra wide drops dramatically from 48 megapixels all the way to just 13. These are literally the same sensors from the budget Pixel 9a on a flagship phone in 2025. On paper, that sounds terrible, but in practice, the result might surprise you. The biggest change you can't see is the new Tensor G5 chip and this is actually massive because for the first time Google ditched Samsung Foundry and went with TSMC's advanced 3 nanometer process. Now if you followed Pixel phones for the past few years, you know Tensor chips have had issues, overheating and inconsistent performance. Google claims the G5 is 34% faster and 60% more power efficient. The Pro models even have vapor chamber cooling now. And the early signs suggest they might have actually solved the biggest problem. Here's what's really happening. Google isn't trying to win the spec war anymore. They're trying to win the AI war. The Pixel 10 runs Google's most efficient Gemini nano model directly on the device and they've built generally useful features around this magic queue proactively surfaces information from your apps before you even ask for it getting ready for trip for example it shows the boarding pass destination weather and departure timing based on traffic call notes automatically transcribes and summarizes your phone's conversations Camera Coach gives you real-time photographic guidance through the viewfinder. Now, is this magic or is it just really sophisticated predictive algorithms? Probably the latter. But it feels like magic and that's what matters. Let's talk about these controversial cameras. Because Google's bet is that computational photography can overcome hardware limitations. And here's the thing. Photos from this downgraded main camera look virtually identical to the Pixel 9's Pro in most lighting conditions. The new 5x telephoto on the base model means more people get access to really impressive zoom photography. And the 20x Super Res room is actually usable now. The trade is definitely the ultra wide. The drop from 48 to 13 megapixel is noticeable in detail and low light performance. But for most people, having three lenses, including telephoto, is probably more valuable than having one exceptional ultra wide. And then there's the Pixel 10 Pro Fold. This is the first foldable with full IP68 water and dust resistance. The hinge mechanism has been completely redesigned. While it's not flashy, it might be the most important advancement in foldables this year. You can actually treat this like a normal phone in normal environments. Here's what Google is really doing. They're playing the long-term game. 
Seven years of software updates, they're not trying to get you to upgrade every two years. They want this phone to last a decade. And with the free AI Pro subscription for pro model buyers, they're betting once you're in the AI ecosystem, you won't want to leave. It's the Apple playbook, but with AI in instead of just hardware integration. So is this the most boring pixel ever? Visually, maybe, but strategically, it might be the smartest thing Google has ever done. They have fixed the fundamental issues that have plagued Pixel phones for years. The Tensor G5 actually works efficiently. The cameras, despite the spec downgrades, deliver excellent results. The AI features are generally useful, not just marketing gimmicks. At $799 for the base model, $999 for the Pro, and $1899 for the Pro 4, these are positioned aggressively against the competition, especially when you factor in that 7 years update prompt, the Pixel 10 isn't trying to be the best phone in 2025. It's trying to be the foundation for next decades of smartphones. And that might be exactly what the smartphone industry needs right now. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.